Medal of Honor Above and Beyond released December last year, and it had a rough launch with some lacklustre media reviews and sat at negative reviews on Steam. The game has received some patches, and it now sits mixed with less than a thousand reviews total. For a game with a AAA budget, this is not good. For comparison, the only other VR game developed with a similar sized team, and presumably a similar budget, which is Half-Life Alex, currently has over 42,000 reviews, and is still getting over 2,000 reviews a month, almost a year after release. This is actually comparable to some big AAA non-VR games, like Jedi Fallen Order, Death Stranding, and Horizon Zero Dawn. So just because it's a VR game, it doesn't automatically make it a failure as long as the game is good enough and it's based on a known IP. I've played through the game myself and I personally enjoyed it for the most part and I think it's one of the best VR games out there, especially if you're looking for a single player shooter with some meat. So what went wrong? There are a lot of factors in my opinion, so let's go over them in more detail. Let's start with the graphics. When we first got a look at the game back in September 2019, I was personally disappointed with how the game looked. The game just looked dated and far from cutting edge. Now I've had a chance to play the game, I have to say the game looks significantly better in the headset. It's actually a really nice looking game, one of the best, with nice lighting, some really detailed environments, and good looking character models and in-game assets for the most part. There's a section in the game where you're positioned on a bell tower with a sniper rifle, and you can see out for miles. It looks really good all the way off into the distance, and the game has got a lot of polish and detail you only see in AAA games. The problem is with the art style they've chosen to go with, which makes the game look from a couple of generations back when it's viewed on a YouTube video, and ultimately that's where people will see the game and decide if they were interested in it or not. In my opinion, they would have been better off going with a more realistic, gritty look, which would have appealed to more people and looked better on a 2D video. Valve knew when they were making Half-Life Alyx that it needed to look next-gen, even though it's a VR game, and they built the world and the levels around this. If Alex didn't look as good as it does, then it wouldn't have sold anywhere near as well as it has. There's a section in Medal of Honor where you storm a beach, and I found it underwhelming. If they'd have gone with something like from Saving Private Ryan, with bad weather, heavy mist, and bullets flying, it would have been much better. So visually, it's good in the headset, but ultimately looks dated due to the art style on YouTube. Another issue is with the single player campaign. It's a long 10 to 12 hour romp across Europe. It's got some great moments that really make you say wow, and when you're on foot making your way through some nice looking environments shooting Nazis, it's at its best. Unfortunately, it has some poor pacing and bad game design decisions that hold it back from greatness. The gameplay is cut up into little sections. The first two hours are really bad for this, with lots of you standing around, listening to people talk. Then you, when you actually get to shoot people, it only lasts for about five minutes before more talk. It feels incredibly disjointed and constantly pulls you out of the experience. When the game launched, it even had a massive screen with a victory sign on it after every single little section. Luckily, this has been patched out, so it simply fades to black, and then fades you back into the next scene. It's still isn't ideal, but it's a lot better than it was before. After about the two hour mark, you get to the Gestapo headquarters, the game does start to get a lot better with longer sections of gameplay and less interruptions. And I really started to enjoy it and wanted to keep going. The problem is, when you buy a game on Steam, you've only got two hours to decide if you want to keep it or get a refund. The first two hours are pretty poor. I don't personally blame anyone for refunding the game and leaving a negative review based on what they played in this time period. Even after the Gestapo headquarters, the game still is far from perfect, and still has things separated into chunks with some interruptions, even if they are less frequent. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Very early on in the game, you're in the back of a truck, stuck in place, listening to people talk for over two minutes. Then you're in a mission briefing, stuck in place, listening to people talk for another minute. Now you're on a boat, stuck in place, listening to people talk, and watching a lighthouse explode, which takes about 30 seconds. Now you teleport onto the shore, where you go into a house and kill a couple of waves of Nazis, which will take you about three to five minutes, absolute maximum. Now you're on the back of a truck, you're stuck in place, listening to people talk for another minute. Now you're inside a bookstore, you literally just walk to where the indicator is, and now, you guessed that you're stuck in place, listening to people talk for another two minutes. So in the space of around 10 minutes, you're looking at being transported to six different locations you had about three, maybe five minutes maximum of actual gameplay. Like I mentioned, these interruptions do get less frequent, but they still happen after the first two hours. So let me give some feedback to the developers on how to avoid these problems. First, 
You never take control of the player. This sort of stuff might be okay in non-VR games because you're not as stuck in the world. You can check your phone or maybe pick your nose. But in VR, if you want to have sections where you actually have dialogue, you need to design the levels around it. You need to funnel the player into a small area so that they can't just walk off and make the environment interesting. An example of this would be when you meet Russell for the first time in Half-Life Alex. You're in a small room with no way to leave, but you can still walk around freely. Even if you're not interested in what he's saying, the environment is so rich with detail, you'll find things to look at, like a shrimp-wrapped hedgecrab in the fridge. Russell then brings you back into the conversation by asking you to place an item on the table to represent your location. Having you walk up to an indicator, then fade to black, then fade back in again, making sure you stood in the correct place, unable to move and forced to listen to what's being said, it's just bad game design and I have to question how much playtesting they did to not see this. Also having the game in all these little chunks, constantly being put into different places, ruins the flow of the game. It's the most immersive breaking thing you can do in VR. I appreciate that they wanted to try and mix things up, having you see loads of different locations and they do have some cool moments like being in a bomber, having to run from one mounted gun to another. You have to duck your head down in real life to avoid hitting your head on the incredibly cramped interior of the plane. But I personally would have been happy to sacrifice these things in order to get a more cohesive game that makes you feel like you're actually going on a journey rather than a bunch of cool ideas mashed together. Some of these little diversions don't work great anyway. Getting to drive around in a tank looked like it was going to be amazing, except for you're not actually driving the tank, you're controlling the guns, and you aim the guns with your head. The overall tone of the game is off as well. Along with the cartoony art style, they've got these campy, cheesy characters that you build no rapport with and you feel nothing for them other than them being in the way of you actually playing the game. I've mentioned before that I feel like the game would have looked better and would have been received better if it would have gone for the more realistic, gritty look. And having a tone that matches this would have been much, much better in my opinion. I would have preferred the campaign to have focused on you and maybe a small team of men going on foot to complete a mission encountering enemy outposts along the way. Maybe you meet up with other squads that ask you for your help, like infiltrating a Nazi base to plant explosives on some anti-aircraft guns. You could have a section where you make your way through a war-torn city, going through some crumbling buildings, trying to take out patrols and avoid a tank. We've already seen this type of thing in films, like Saving Private Ryan or 1917. So the single-player campaign has some pacing issues. It feels like it's wasting your time on occasion, but once you get past a certain point, it does get better and overall, I did have fun with it. The other factor in its failure is its price. It's a full price game at $60 or £45. And I think based on what the game is now, if it was cheaper, maybe $40, people who were refunded within the first two hours might not have, and maybe people wouldn't have bashed it as hard. But if the game was good enough, then people would have raved about the game, and it would have been worth that price to more people. I personally paid full price for it, and I've got no regrets, so I don't think the price is the main factor, but it definitely didn't help. So the main reasons why Medal of Honor failed in my opinion are the art style, which looks dated on YouTube videos, and some poor pacing and game design decisions in the campaign, especially within that first two hour refund window. But even if they fix those issues, there are still some small details holding this game back from being up there with Half-Life Alex. The hand interactions in this game feel quite dated, so how you pick things up or interact with things in the world. The hands have no collisions, so they simply go through everything, when you pick something up, you place your hand near an object, you press the grip and it teleports into your hand in a predetermined position. It's pretty standard now to have some way to be able to pick things up without having to bend over or reach out and grab the item as if you would in real life. This is because it gets pretty laborious after a while, but other games have already figured this stuff out. With Boneworks, you've got a small marker on the object where you're focusing on, you press the grip and trigger and it will fly through the air into your hand. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners does the same thing with the object highlighting, then you simply hold the grip button and it flies into your hand. Half-Life Alex has got the gravity gloves, so an object was highlighted, you press the trigger and then you flick your hand up, the item flies towards you and you catch it. All these methods are satisfying to use and don't break immersion. Having things that instantly appear in your hand feels clunky and breaks immersion. The objects only have one way to hold them, which is fine for small stuff, but when you have big things, you should have a few places you can grab depending on where your hand is positioned. The objects don't have any weight, so big things that should be heavier fail weightless, again which breaks immersion. The weapons feel satisfying to use when you have them in your hands and you're shooting at things, but the handling of the guns is oversimplified. When you reload a gun, you eject a magazine, 
You grab a new one, but instead of having to be precise and slot the new one in place, you just put your hand near the gun and it let go. You have to grab the charge handle to rack a slide, but it's very forgiving. You don't have to be very precise and the hand will just warp in place even if your real life hand is a few inches away. It feels clunky and yet again it breaks immersion. You also have to rack a slide every single time you reload, even if the gun isn't empty. This removes a layer of depth to the gunplay because you can't hot swap, so you may as well just run the gun dry. Some guns, like the shotgun, reload for you. The shells are just magically loaded, which brings some serious balancing issues with the multiplayer. I'll finish off with some multiplayer talk, because when you've done with a single player campaign, you would normally want to come over and get in some rounds against real people. There are five different modes and 12 maps. The maps look great, they all have a distinctive look and feel, with lots of cover and multiple paths. The problem is that no one's playing them, so you just play against bots, which are very easy to kill. It's a real shame because I would love to have some fast paced multiplayer matches in this game. There are lots of multiplayer VR shooters, but Medal of Honor has got dedicated servers and rather than having to try and find a game to play the same map over and over, it would be great to have a game where you can jump into a stable server that automatically rotates through maps. Overall Medal of Honor is a good game that has some great moments and enjoyable shooting but falls short of greatness due to some poor game design decisions and dated gameplay mechanics. I hope we see Respawn get another chance to make a VR game because I'm confident that they nail it the second time around.